So far, we have seen the relation between martingales and stopping times, and we also addressed the question of convergence of martingales. So we have seen that martingales have a lot of desired properties. This brings us to the following question. Is it possible to extract from a given stochastic process its martingale part? And to illustrate that, let us have a look at the following example. So I consider a sequence ZT uh, of square integrable random variables, and I would like to assume that this sequence is IID. Moreover, the expectation of Z1 should be zero, and I denote the variance of Z1 simply by sigma square. Let us then define the natural filtration with respect to the sequence ZT simply by setting FT um, to be the smallest sigma algebra such that the random variables C0 up to ZT are measurable. And then I define xt for any t in the natural numbers including 0 simply as that partial sum n from 0 to t of these random variables zn. And this is nothing else but a, um, a random walk. And we have already seen in the situation that the expectation vanishes that that process is a martingale. So what I would like to uh, convince, yourself, uh, convince you is the following, that when I consider the square of the process, then I get a sub-martingale. So what I would like to do is, I would like to apply Jensen's inequality, meaning lemma 17, uh, 117b. For that I have to check that the expectation of xt square is finite. But let us plug in what we know about xt. So this is nothing else but um, by using uh, simply Cauchy-Schwarz inequality, uh, t plus 1 times the expectation of the sum n from 0 to t of zn square. And since these random variables zn are uh, identically distributed by taking out that um, uh, and the sum uh, and the exp uh, from the expectation by linearity of this expectation, I simply get um, the expression uh, t plus 1 squared times the expectation of z1 squared, which is finite by assumption. Hence, indeed, the square of uh, the considered martingale is a sub-martingale. Now I would like to consider the following process. Namely, I consider the process xt square, from which we know this is a sub-martingale, and I subtract um, the following real number, namely t times sigma square. And this um, random variable I define for any t in the natural numbers, including zero. And then let us consider what kind of properties that process, process has. Uh, first of all, uh, for any t, this random variable x t square minus t sigma square is an ft. Hence, that process is adapted to our filtration ft, which we defined above. Moreover, we already have seen that this process, uh, so this random variable over here, is um, uh, has finite expectation. Why is that the case? Well, simply apply the triangular inequality with the expectation of xt we already computed and the expectation of this uh, deterministic number is simply t times sigma square. And in that way we convinced ourselves that that process is also integrable. So let us do now the following computation. I, mean, I would like to compute the expectation of x uh, t plus 1 squared minus t plus 1 sigma squared given the filtration ft. So what can I do now? Well, first of all, by plugging in the definition uh, of um, uh, xt plus 1, which is nothing else but this partial sum um, n equal to 0 up to t plus 1 of the random variables vn. I can split that thing in the first uh, t plus 1 summons and the last sum. And the last sum is simply the value z t plus 1. And since I have a square here, I simply use binomial formula. So by that I get simply x t square plus 2 times x t times 
zt plus 1 plus zt plus 1 square. Um, and from that random variable, I compute the conditional expectation given the sigma algebra ft. And using the linearity of the conditional expectation, I can take out that deterministic term. And this deterministic term is for sure measurable with respect to ft. So I get that out of the conditional expectation. This is simply that if summoned over here. Moreover, I know that this process xt is ft measurable. So using this measurable factor property of the conditional expectation, I can that random variable um, uh, after using the linearity of the conditional expectation out of the conditional expectation and simply get xt square. The same applies to that factor. So what I'm left with is the conditional expectation of zt plus 1 given the filtration ft. And uh, obviously I also get the conditional expectation of zt plus 1 square given the filtration ft. So what do we know now? Well, since the sequence x, uh, um, xn are independent random variables, we also know that the random variable uh, x and t plus 1, or more precisely, sigma algebra generated by z t plus 1 is independent of the sigma algebra f t. So using that um, independence property of the conditional expectation, this simply tells us that this conditional expectation equals the expectation of the random variable z t plus 1. And using the identical distribution of the sequence of random variables, that's the same as the expectation of z1, which is 0 by assumption. And the same applies to that conditional expectation over here. So in that way, I obtain the expectation of z1 square. And this is nothing else but sigma square by definition. So you see what I get here. So this term completely vanishes. I get here one sigma square, which simply cancels that one over here. So and I'm ending up with the expression uh, x squared t minus t times sigma square p almost surely. So all these inequalities hold true p almost surely. So and what you see here is simply the Martingale property. Hence we have shown that this process x squared t minus t times sigma square is a Martingale. So meaning we have found a new process here is simply this deterministic process t times sigma square, such that if we extract, uh, extract from our sub-martingale this deterministic process, I end up with a martingale. So in this observation, one can make a much more generality. And that's the uh, statement of Dupe's decomposition. So let us start here with an adapted stochastic process, which I denote by x, which is defined on our favorite uh, filtered probability space, omega f f t p. And I would like to assume that the expectation of the modulus of x t is finite for any t. And then the first statement is the following. The stochastic process x can be decomposed into three summons. Namely, xt is equal to x0 plus mt plus at, and this holds true for any t, where this process mt is simply a martingale with the additional property that m0 is equal to 0, and this process at is a predictable process having also the property that it vanishes at time point 0. And the second part of the statement is the following. If we assume in addition that our stochastic process X, with which we started here, is a sub-martingale, then it holds true that this um, predictable process AT is P almost surely increasing. And also the, the opposite assertion holds true, namely if we know that this um, predicted process uh, is increasing p almost surely, then it implies that the stochastic process with which we started with is a sub martingale. So let us have a look at the proof of that theorem. So, and we have to show uh, two 
statements. Namely, first of all, we have to prove the existence. If you see, we assume that such decomposition exists. And moreover, we uh, claim that this decomposition is pure, almost surely unique. So for the existence part, we define the following two processes. First of all, we set M0 and M, uh, A0 equal to 0. And then we define for any t in the natural numbers the process or this random variable AT simply by this partial of sum n from 1 to t of the conditional expectation of the increments of the process xn minus xn minus 1 given the filtration fn minus 1. And on the other hand, we define uh, the random variable mt as this partial sum n from 1 to t of xn minus the conditional expectation of xn given fn minus 1. So what do we know about that process um, uh, A? First of all, by definition, you see, since we have here condition expectation, this process is predictable. So meaning AT is FT minus 1 measurable. Uh, and moreover, we know that this um, random variable MT is integrable. So why is that the case? So if we take, consider the expectation of the modulus of MT by using the triangular inequality, we can bring the modulus inside the sum. And then we can also bring a take here bound that modulus of the difference simply by uh, the uh, modulus of the sum of both terms. And here we can also bring the, uh, the absolute value inside the conditional expectation by the triangular inequality. And then if we take expectation, we end up over here simply by two times the expectation of xn. So, and, and then we sum simply these random variables uh, from n from 1 to t. And by, assum by the assumption we know that the expectation of the modulus of xn is finite for any n. Hence, this immediately implies that the expectation of the modulus of mt is finite, meaning uh, mt is integrable for any, um, for any uh, t in the national numbers, including 0. Moreover, we also know uh, that um, mt is ft measurable. Well, we started with an adapted stochastic process, and we also know that that um, uh, summit over here is um, f n minus 1 measurable. And since we have here all these uh, summons, we know that this whole expression is in f t. So what remains is let us compute now the expectation of m t plus 1 given the filtration f t. So, well, let us have a look at this random variable here. So mt plus 1 is simply the partial sum n from 1 to t plus 1, which we also can write as, um, as, this, pro, as this random variable mt. So I only take the first uh, t summons. And what is left is then this um, random variable xt plus 1 minus the conditional expectation of xt plus 1 a uh, given f. T. So what do we know? Since mt is ft um, measurable using linearity of the conditional expectation and the theorem on measurable factors, I can, that, can take that term out of the conditional expectation. So I ended up here with mt. Moreover, I am also obtain the expectation of xn plus 1 given ft and that term here is ft measurable, so I can take it out from the condition expectation. And then you see I get twice, so I get the difference between the condition expectation of xt plus 1 given ft minus the condition expectation of xt plus 1 given the filtration ft, which cancel out each other. So I'm at the end ending up with mt plus 1 p almost truly, meaning indeed that process we defined over here is a martingale. And by construction, it vanishes at time point zero. Hence, 
we obtained the desired uh, decomposition. Namely, if we now compute what is the value of x0 plus mt plus at. So I plug in the definition of mt and I plug in the definition of uh, at. And now you see uh, these conditional expectations cancel out each other because here you have minus the conditional expectation, here you have plus the conditional expectation and you end up here simply by this partial sum n from 1 to t of these increments xn minus xn minus 1 and again this is nothing else but a telescopic sum meaning that only the first and the last term survives. So the first term is simply x0, so minus x0, which cancels that sum and over here. So and what is left is then from that telescopic sum simply the value xt. Hence we found our um, decomposition of the process xt into a martingale and a predictable process. So let us address now the question of uniqueness. So suppose that we have two different decompositions of our stochastic process xt, meaning that we have one, decomp uh, one decomposition which I denote by x0, mt and at, and another one which I denote by x0 plus uh, m prime t plus a prime t. And I would like to assume that both mt and m prime t are martingales which vanishes at time point zero and uh, the process at and a prime t are predictable process again which vanishes at time point zero. So what I would like to uh, show is the following, namely that the difference between mt, uh, at and at prime is zero p almost surely for every t in the natural numbers including zero. And this I would like to prove by induction. So the base call is rather simple. At time point zero, we know that by definition, by construction, that uh, a naught and a prime naught are both equal to zero, hence this difference is zero. And we are done with that part. So let us consider now the induction step. So I would like to prove that if we know the hypo uh, induction hypothesis for t minus 1, then it also implies that the statement holds true for uh, a time point t. So how to prove that? Well, since we know that these two decompositions are both decomposition of the process xt, meaning these two things, that these two sums are the same for every t, I can rewrite that in an equivalent form, namely, this is the same as a t minus a prime t is equal to m prime t minus m t. And I would like to take advantage of that representation over here. So since we know that the process a and the process a prime is predictable, we know that a t minus a prime t is f t minus 1 measurable. So hence, by using the measurable factor property of the conditional expectation, we know that the conditional expectation of the difference between a t and a prime t given the sigma algebra f t minus 1 is p almost surely the same as a t minus a prime t. On the other hand, I would like to use exactly that representation over here, namely that this difference between a t and a prime t equals to the difference between m prime t and m t. So let us plug that in. So since we know that both m prime t and m t are martingales, so using the linearity of the conditional expectation and the martingale property, we simply end up with the difference m prime t minus 1 minus m t minus 1. And if we use again that representation over here, we can replace this difference of the martingales simply by the difference of the predictable processes at time point t minus 1. But now we can uh, take um, advantage of the induction hypothesis which tells us that this difference over here is equal to zero. 
Hence, we have proven that, this, uh, that the process AT is equal to the process A prime T, P almost surely, for all T in the natural numbers, including zero. And since we know that, we also know by that representation over here, the martingales MT and M prime T um, coincide for any T in the natural numbers P almost surely. Hence, we have proven that this uh, decomposition is pure almost surely unique. So let us come now to the second part of the statement, which tells us that X is a sub-martingale if and only if this predictable process is P almost surely increasing. So let us first prove the, uh, the direction um, that if um, X is a sub-martingale, then the predictable process is increasing. So for that, let us consider the difference between a t plus 1 minus a t. So since the process a is predictable, we know that this difference over here is f t measurable. Hence, we can use the measure of factor property of the conditional expectation to rewrite that difference over here also as the, expect, the conditional expectation of this difference given is a sigma algebra ft. And this equality holds true pre almost surely. But now I can do the following. I can rewrite the process a t plus 1 in terms of uh, x t plus 1 and um, m t plus 1. As the same I can do for a t. I can also write a t simply as xt minus mt. And you see this x0 term cancels out. So what do we gain from that? So first of all we know is this process mt is a martingale, meaning that the condition expectation of mt plus 1 minus mt given the filtration ft is equal to zero. So this last sum completely drops out. So and what is left here? Well, we know by assumption that the process X is a sub martingale, meaning that the condition expectation of X t plus 1 minus X t given the sigma algebra f t is larger equal to zero. And using that, we conclude that uh, this difference between a t plus 1 and a t is larger equal to zero, p almost truly, which is nothing else but uh, the statement that our process, uh, our predictable process A, is P almost surely increasing. This was the first direction. Let us consider now the, uh, the other direction. Let us assume that our predictable process in the dupe decomposition is P almost surely increasing. So then I would like to consider the conditional expectation of x t plus 1 minus x t given the filtration f t. So what do we know here? Well, so we can plug in again the dupes decomposition for x t plus 1 and we can plug in dupes decomposition for x t. And in that way we obtain simply the condition expectation of m t plus 1 minus m t given f t which vanishes again due to the fact that the process mt is a martingale. And we also get the, diff the conditional expectation of the difference between at plus 1 and at, given the filtration ft. So since we know that this process a is predictable, we know that this difference over here, I mean the difference between at plus 1 and at, is ft measurable. So I can again use the measurable factor property of the conditional expectation, which allows me to take out that random variable from the conditional expectation. So I end up with that difference here. And by assumption, I know that this difference is larger or equal to zero p almost surely due to the fact that our process A is p almost surely increasing. Hence, this shows us uh, that the this process X is indeed a sub -martingale. And this concludes the proof of the dupe decomposition. So let us come now to an example of that. I would like to hear uh, again, so that's a kind of um, generalization of the last example I discussed. 
So I would like to consider square integrable martingale, which I denote by x, defined on our favorite filtered probability space. And by square integrable, I mean that for any t in the natural numbers, including zero, the random variable xt is in L2. So what do we know? Well, again, by using yen, since inequality, we know that the process xt square is a sub martingale. Hence, we can apply dupes decomposition to that sub martingale. So, and then we end up with, um, with a predictable process, which I denoted by A, which has a property that uh, A naught of, uh, is equal to zero. Uh, and, and such that um, the difference between um, x squared t minus a t is a martingale. So why is that the case? Well, you see, if I consider so if I simply bring here z random variable on the other side, I simply get x0 plus mt. So x0 is f0 measurable by the assumption that the process is adapted. And mt is a martingale, so x0 is as well a martingale. Hence, we get here on that side our desired martingale. So what I would like to do now, I would like to have a closer look how does the process AT looks like. So let us have a look uh, as a proof how did we define that uh, predictable process. So you see, we define that as a partial sum n from 1 to t of the condition expectation of the increments of the process um, xn minus xn minus 1 given the filtration fn minus 1. So let's do that in that particular example. So the process we are considering here is simply xt squared. So we have here the representation that at is equal to this partial sum n from 1 to t of the condition expectation of xn squared minus xn minus 1 squared given the filtration fn minus 1. So what I would like to do now is I would like to take advantage of the second binomial formula in such a way that I can rewrite this difference of the squares as the difference squared. And then I have to do all the correction terms. And I claim the correction terms is twice xn minus 1 times the uh, and difference between xn and xn minus 1. So why is that the case? So let's open this bracket. So I get xn square, which is exactly that term. Then I get, get the mixed term, which is minus 2 times xn times xn minus 1. And you see, this is exactly 2 times n, xn minus 1 times xn compensated here, since we have here a plus sign. And the last term over here is um, plus x n minus 1 squared and you see on that side we have here 2 times x n minus 1 squared with a minus sign in front which cancels exactly this plus term here and I get exactly this minus x n minus 1 squared. So this is exactly the right um, so we have not lose, lost any term. So what I have done here as well is I took advantage of the fact that we know by assumption that the process x is a martingale and in particular we know that xn minus 1 is fn minus 1 measurable. Hence we can apply uh, the measurable factor property of the condition expectation and I'm allowed to take out that uh, random variable from the condition expectation p almost surely. So, and moreover, we know since x is a martingale that this difference and the condition expectation of this difference given fn minus 1 vanishes. So you see, this last bit over here is completely, uh, vanishes completely, and we are ended up with this partial sum n from 1 to t of the condition expectation of xn minus xn minus 1 square given fn minus 1. 
So from that representation, you see immediately that this process AT is increasing, which completely makes sense because the process XT square is a submartingale. And moreover, we can easily compute the expected value of AT. So you see, AT is nothing else but this partial sum of the expected value of this difference xn minus xn minus 1 squared. Remember that xn is a martingale, so this means that the expectation of xn minus xn minus 1 is equal to 0. This means that this expectation is equal to the variance of the difference between xn and an xn minus 1. And I also claim that z partial sum of these variants equals the variance of xt minus x0. So why is that the case? This you see easily by having a look at that representation over here. Namely, if you take here the expected value, you end up with the expected, expected value of xn squared minus the expected, expected value of xn minus 1 squared. You see you end up with a telescopic sum, meaning only the first and the last term survives. And the first term, so the last term is the expected value of xt squared, and the first term, which you have to subtract, is the expected value of uh, x naught squared. And then you can again use the same decomposition we used here to rewrite that as um, uh, this uh, difference squared. And you can use again this Martingale property and you immediately see that you end up with the variance between xt and x0. So why I have done that exercise or this example? Uh, well, this gives rise to the following process, and this has a particular name, namely the so-called quadratic variation process. And that's the following. So if you have an L square integrable martingale, meaning that xt is an uh, L2 for any t, uh, then the p almost surely uniquely defined predictable process from our decomposition, A, such that this a process xt squared minus at is a martingale, has a name, namely it's called the quadratic variation process of x, and this is denoted by this angular bracket. So this um, quadratic variation process is of x is simply this angular bracket of xt. And this is simply defined by this um, process a, which we defined over here. So meaning that this, uh, this angular bracket x t is nothing else but the sum n from 1 to t of the condition expectation of this difference between x n and x n minus 1 squared given the filtration f n minus 1. And this process later on will also play a crucial role in the in, in further and deeper uh, financial mathematic lectures when you uh, discuss stochastic integrals and uh, stochastic um, differential equation and Ito's formula, then this process is a crucial ingredient in that theory. So let us give you to you an, an last application of Dupes decomposition. And that's the following statement, namely Dupes optional sampling theory. And that this tells you the following. So suppose x is a martingale or sub or super martingale, and you have two stopping times, sigma and t, which should have the following property, namely, first of all, uh, these stopping times are bounded, meaning they exist uh, in natural number t, such that uh, sigma and t are bounded from above by t. And moreover, I would like to assume that sigma is less than or equal to tau. And then it holds true that the conditional expectation of x tau given as a sigma algebra generated by x sigma is equal to x sigma. 
And you see here, if you have a sub martingale, then this inequality holds. And if you have a super martingale, this inequality holds. And this uh, equality or this inequality holds true p almost true. So how to prove that? So well, the proof um, consists of three steps. So let us focus first um, on step one. Namely, I would like to consider a martingale denoted by x and a bounded stopping time, a tor, which should be bounded from above by this value capital T. And then I would like to show that the condition expectation of x capital T given the tor pass, namely this sigma algebra, um, which we defined uh, previously, is equal to x tor p almost shown. So how to prove that? So first of all, we know by lemma 1.4e that the random variable x tor is f tor measurable. So hence, we know also um, by the uniqueness of the conditional expectation, so this is almost sure uniqueness, um, that we only have to check the second property in order uh, to prove that statement over here. Why is that? Well, if we show that the expectation of the indicator function of an event A taken from the sigma algebra f tau of the process xt equals to the um, expected value of the indicator function of a of the random variable x tau, it immediately follows from the uniqueness of the condition expectation that uh, um, this equality holds true p almost true. Well, how to do that? So for that, fix, let us fix an event A in the sigma algebra f tor, in this tor past. So then by definition of that sigma algebra and by using lemma 1.2, we know that, um, uh, that this event that tor is equal to t by that lemma is ft measurable. And moreover, we have here that this event A is taken from that sigma algebra, hence the intersection between this event tor equal to t and this event A, we know that this thing is in a ft for every t in the natural numbers, including zero. So hence we can do the following decomposition. So we start with the expectation of the indicator function of this event A and the process x tor. So let us decompose um, um, or introduce the following decomposition, namely we would like to fix the value tor can assume. So we, since we know that tor is less than or equal to t, we can simply write um, a 1 uh, as the sum t from 0 to capital T of the indicator function that tor is equal to t. So by linearity, I took that sum out of the expectation. So and what I'm ended up here is simply since we know that tor is equal to t, I can replace here x tor simply by x t. So what do we know now? So this event over here is by definition and the observation we have made here in f t. So meaning I can uh, use uh, I can uh, simply um, use the fact that x t is a martingale to write that term over here as a condition expectation, and then I can use the second property of the condition expectation, which tells us that that object, that expectation we have here, equals the expectation of the indicator function of the event A intersected with the events at torus equal to t of x t. So once we arrived at that representation, I can again take that uh, finite sum into the, ex uh, the um, expected value. And then you see by summing up over all little t from zero to capital T, I simply get here the indicator function of omega. So I intersect A with omega, which simply gives A. And in that way, I have shown to you 
that the expectation of the indicator function of this event A of the random variable x tau equals the expected value of the indicator function of A of this process x at time point t. Meaning, we exactly have shown that statement due to the uniqueness of the conditional expectation. So this was step number one. Let us come now to step number two. So again, I assume that x is a martingale, and now I consider two stopping times, namely sigma and tau, which should have the property that sigma is less than or equal to tau, and tau should be less than or equal to t, where t is some deterministic number. So what do we know? Since we know that sigma is less than or equal to tau, we know by lemma 1.4c that the sigma algebra f sigma, so the sigma algebra of the sigma past, is contained in the sigma algebra of the tau past. Hence, we can now um, uh, use the tower property. So how to do that? Well, let us start with the conditional expectation of x tau given the sigma algebra f sigma. So now I, we know by definition that x tau is nothing else but, so this we have shown in step one, is nothing else but the conditional expectation of x capital T given the sigma algebra of f tau. And from that conditional expectation we can compute the conditional expectation given the sigma algebra f sigma. Since f sigma is a smaller sigma algebra, by the tower property, we know that this is the same as the conditional expectation of x t given f sigma. Now we can apply again step one, which tells us that that conditional expectation over here is nothing else but x sigma p almost surely. So hence we have proven uh, this theorem over here uh, in the Martingale case. Let us come now to the sub-Martingale case, and the super-Martingale case is analog. So let us assume that x is sub-Martingale. And again, I consider two stopping times, sigma and tau, such that sigma is bounded from above by this random variable tau, and tau is from, bounded from above by this deterministic number t. So by Dupes decomposition, I can write this sub-Martingale as the value x0 plus mt, which is a martingale, plus this process at, which is predictable, and due to the assumption that x is a sub-martingale, we know that this predictable process is an increasing process, and both um, the martingale and this predictable process vanish, vanishes uh, at time point zero. So then we can do now the following computation. So let us compute the conditional expectation of x tau given the sigma algebra f sigma. So let us plug in for x tau simply the stoop decomposition. So this is nothing else but x naught plus m tau plus a tau. So then we use linearity. So since we know that x0 is C, uh, measurable with respect to f0, we also know that it's measurable with respect to f sigma. Hence, we can, can take that term out of the conditional expectation by using the measurable factor property of the conditional expectation. Moreover, we know by step two that if we have a martingale, that's a conditional expectation of m tau given the sigma algebra of the sigma pass is equal to m sigma. So what we are left with is a conditional expectation of a uh, tau given the sigma algebra f sigma. But now I can take advantage of the fact that we know that this process A is increasing. Since uh, um, sigma is less than or equal to tau, we know that a tau is larger or equal to a sigma, p almost surely. Hence, we get the following p almost sure lower bound, namely x naught plus m sigma plus the conditional expectation of a sigma given the sigma algebra of the sigma past. And since this process by lemma 1.4e is um, 
f a sigma measurable, I can take it out from the um, condition expectation using the measurable factor property of the condition expectation. And then I can put this, um, use again the decomposition, which allows me to rewrite that sum over here simply as the value x sigma. And all these inequalities hold true p almost surely. And in this way, we conclude the proof. So what have we seen in that lecture? We have get to know martingales and various properties of martingales. And we have uh, also addressed the relation between martingales and stopping times. And moreover, the convergence of martingales. And the main tool in that context was uh, the martingale um, transform, meaning the property of this discrete stochastic integral. And uh, moreover, we have seen at the end here that we can decompose any given process into three parts, the initial value, a martingale part, and a predictable process. And this also allows us to uh, use all the results we have proven before on parts of this uh, decomposition. And in this way, um, we have a good toolbox to address now the financial mathematic questions. But more for that in the next lecture.